Welcome to the Mogul Podcast. I'm Tim Bryson, Director of Athlete Education and Compliance, and I'm the host of our show. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning community member, welcome back. As y'all know, the Mogul Podcast is dedicated to educating all NIL athletes and brands on how to ensure compliance, how to maximize NIL activity, and how to make a difference in the ever-evolving NIL landscape. Today's guest, I mean, if you've seen the clip art, you know who we're talking to today. Um, this guest, um, a lot of introductions, right? A lot of podcasts this guest has done. Uh, but as I told her, it's going to be our favorite podcast to date uh, because we're going to keep it 100. Uh, we're going to get to the root uh, of this guest story and really talk about NIL from an athlete perspective. So without further ado, Monet Davis, what's popping, homie? Nothing much. Just trying to get through the week, honestly. Hey, check this out. So this podcast is audio, right? And it's video, as you know. And I purposely went and got my hair cut for this. You see this? You see that, that, that <laughs> I, drop see, I see the fade. I Come see, on I now. See shout, out, shout out to Eric. Shout out to Eric. I'm telling Eric uh, on route one. But check this out. I'm super hyped for this conversation, yo. Uh, for those who follow Mogul and follow you, they saw what you um, and we had done this past weekend up in New York. Uh, but before mm -hmm. we get to that, we more, I really want to know, we really want to know uh, more about your story outside of what we can find online, right? Yeah. So segment one, Monet, what's your story? Um... Dang. Basically, you know, I grew up playing sports. I have an older brother. I have a bunch of older cousins. And you know, since I can remember, I was just always around sports, wanted to be active. Um, I remember playing like NBA 2K Live. This is when Live is like the big game and not too, mm -hmm. you know, regular 2K. So mm -hmm. I remember just, you know, growing up playing that. I would always do the three point contest and the dunk contest. And, you know, my team was the Rockets at the time because Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming, you know, they were that duo is just crazy so just watching them um playing with them and then as I started getting older started you know really focusing on basketball um it was something that I really enjoyed I was able to play with my brother when I was like four during like a summer league uh team so being able to just you know play with him because I always thought he was the coolest person around so you know I wanted to follow in his footsteps and follow what he did and just being around sports and um, my older cousin, he also was in sports as well. And he plays at this rec center that was down the street from his house. And, you know, I would always be over there, you know, wanting to be active, wanting to race him all the time, wanting to play catch with him all the time. And I just went to one of his games and afterwards, you know, we did this almost all the time. We'd always go right in the outfield and play manhunt with the football. If you know what that uh, is, it's yeah. like every man for themselves at that point. And, I was out there tackling all the boys. Just like It was kind of like a normal day for me because I always did that. So I'd tackle them. I'd throw, you know, spirals, as my coach said. Um, and he just saw me out there playing. And he, you know, was like, hey, you have a, a really good arm. Um, you should, you know, give your mom my number and, like, come out. And I was like, okay. Um, and we knew about the program because of my cousin. And my mom, you know, she knew it was an all-boys program. And she was like, nah, I'm not having it, like. And at the time, I was the only girl. So it was just me, my older brother, and my younger brother. And we were still super young. Um, so, you know, as my stepdad would always say, it would always be me and my older brother just together everywhere we went. And, you know, we kind of convinced my mom to let me play and let me get into, you know, organized sports because, you know, I really was a huge basketball player. I love playing basketball. And she finally let me do it. She was a little hesitant at first, but she let me do it. And, you know, it got me to – the place I am now and got me into a great you know elementary school and high school um and middle school is one big school got me to a great private school and then it allowed me to you know get a scholarship to Hampton that's super dope and I'm glad you mentioned uh, your your educational upbringing especially the private school which I'll come back to in a second uh, but I was watching a podcast recently I don't know if you watched the pivot pivot podcast like I am athlete I yeah I, I, sometimes a little clips here and there yeah, so they were arguing about, or they were naming, like, you know, people that came out of Philly, right? Mm -hmm. And putting respect on Philly's name. And you're also a Philly native. So I'm curious to learn more about, like, what is it like, what was it like growing up in Philly, given that that city has a lot of history and culture tied to it as well? Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. Honestly, I, like, the only things I really remember, like, the summer times. I know we get up, you know, a lot of kids in the neighborhood, we get up super early in the morning. We were all into sports and you know, we all have bikes and at like eight o'clock in the morning, ride to like the YMCA or go to the park. And, you know, each day there was something different. We play football one day, we play baseball one day, we play basketball, we play, you know, tag, like just being active and staying out all day long. And, you know, not, you know, parents already knew where we were. If we, you know, one person's parent, like parents are like worried about the kids, like, ah, oh, they're, 
they're here at our house or they all went to the park or they went to the pool. So I just remember just being super active and just, you know, being around sports. And it was fun because everybody knew each other. Um, there are a lot of leagues going on around the summertime area. All the kids play together. All the coaches and all the, you know, f the families and everything. Like everybody was super supportive of whatever the kids wanted to do. So it was, a, it, it was fun. Um, you know, every city has their, you know, their bad times and everything. It's that's just life. Um, but, you know, you you knew where to where you could be at, where you could be at, what time you need to be in the house. So it was just like rules like that. But it was just it was a lot of fun. Um, it's a little different now. You know, a lot of kids aren't outside as much. Um, a lot of kids are just like more just into, you know, video games and social mm -hmm. media and stuff like that. So it's a little different when I was growing up. I remember talking about it, like just being just being around, just riding bikes everywhere. I ride from one part of the city to the other and then play basketball and then ride back. Like it was, it was such a fun time when we, when, you know, everybody was younger, but like, it, it truly is like a gritty city all the time. All mm -hmm. everything you hear about the fans, like that's literally like, that's Philly. Like you hear how gritty the fans are, you know, they could be disrespectful, but at the same time, they still will show you love if you're doing what you're supposed to do. So you know, when I was playing, you know, a lot of people were showing me love, you know, they were super happy for me. You know, every time I see them, if I'm still like down in the city walking around, you know, they'd always stop me and say what's up to me and everything. So it's a great city. You know, they'll get on you when you're not doing well. Um, and then when you're doing well, they'll have your back for sure. That, that's super real. You're an Eagles fan? No, not really. I don't really pay attention to football, but, you know, if they're doing well, I'm a cheer for them, hometown team, but like I'm not super into football. Sixers? No. Oh man, I'm about no. to ask. Man, it's a <laughs> I know. I listen. I I watch basketball. I can appreciate good basketball. You know, the Sixers. Yeah. They they need some pieces. <laughs> like they need that extra score. You know, people were relying on Ben Simmons, but all the years leading up to his trade, like we could see, he wasn't that score that they needed. Like. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard to go out and, you know, work on your jump shot. Like, you can work on everything else, but also there's people out here who are professionals at working on jump shots. Like, you can go mm -hmm. out there and fix your jump shot up, especially with all the money you're making. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. and he's a cool person. He's a cool yeah. person. My cousin, he did security for them and everything. He's super cool. He's super nice. Every time I saw him, we would, you know, speak and just have a good time. But just, you know, trying to make, just trying to fix a jump shot where you can get extra money for it, become an all-star for many years. Like, it, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, it, it got to be a deeper story to that. And I know he's on a podcast coming out, coming out soon, so hopefully you can talk more about that. Um, but before we move to segment two, uh, one of the influential decisions you got to make, right, while I was transferring to Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk more about that transfer process and what was your experience like at that private school? Yeah. Um, so I, tr I remember it was like middle of the year. Um, maybe like, be it was like beginning slash middle. So it was like the fall months. I remember, um, my coach telling, you know, me and my mom about the school that his kids went to. He was like, it's one of the top private schools in the country. You know, like it's a great education school, like everything you need is there. So I remember going up and taking a visit and just, you know, I went to a public school. So like they had little cubbies there um each class you know they did specific things but they knew how to have fun you had music class you had gym class like everything was set up they had a, a nice library with tons of books um and just like the overall like atmosphere and the look of the school was like super appealing you know obviously like as a kid you want to go somewhere where it looks nice you know the kids are look like they're having fun and you're also learning so we took a visit there and I really enjoyed it um I thought the girls were super nice and also you didn't have to wear a uniform so I was like I'm all for it like I don't want to wear a uniform um and then I took a test I think at Temple to see you know where I would rank to get into you know the school um I did really well on the test that you know they wanted me to come as soon as possible and I started in like April um yeah and it was it was a little challenging at first just like you know coming into a new school like nobody knows you and they're like who's this new kid just coming in when the school year's almost done um so it was a little challenging in, in that aspect but then you know I once the work started coming I was doing fine with the work um I know we had the same math book that I did when I was at the public school so like a lot of the answers I remembered and I remember doing um but like just the school as a whole is just an amazing school. 
um, it really prepared me for college, I would say, especially, you know, time management wise, that's huge. A lot of people don't have time management skills. And I felt like my high school, like comparing my freshman year of college to like all of high school, I would say like, I feel like I have more work in high school than I did in college. So once, you know, I got to college, I started getting my classes, like it was a lot easier for me to just manage my workload and then also mm-hmm. balance softball on top of that. So mm-hmm. it was, I thought they prepared me really well. Um, they instilled great values in me as, you know, being a good person and how to break down, you know, different stories. If we're talking about English class, how to, you know, just writing skills wise and, you know, just being able to attack, adapt to your situation. So I, Springside's mostly, you know, predominantly white. And then I come to HBCU, but I'm also, I can also adapt to either one. So it was a great great experience being there for however many years I was there and I made lifelong friendships that I'll never forget and I had a great time and shout out to Springside shout out big yeah. shout out to Springside honestly so, <laughs> segment two segment two Monet so you mentioned um you know choosing Hampton right and so being from Philly you definitely jumped over a lot of dope HBCUs along the way uh, but landed at Hampton yeah what was it a deciding factor um well for me you know I I did my research. So my baseball coach and I, we, you know, we sat down, we did our research and I decided that I wanted to play softball pretty late compared to everybody else. You know, everybody grows up playing a sport and then that's where they want to go to college. And for me, I wanted to go to college for basketball and then that just changed going into the senior year. So I had to, you know, send out emails and, you know, possibly thinking about doing like a post-grad year somewhere or going to a JUCO to try to get into a good school. Um, So we were just sending out emails and he was like, check out Hampton. He's like, I think you'd really like it. They have a great journalism program. He's like, and talk to someone if you know anyone there. So one of my great friends that I knew from middle school, she also went to Springside. You know, I was talking to her. She said she loved the school. She said she had a great time. And I emailed the coach and I was talking to the coach and, you know, she seemed like she was all about family. She had kids. So, you know, her kids were kind of, you know, going through like the same process that I was going through. I came for um, a camp. I really liked how they were running the camp. Um, I really liked how their the coaching staff's dynamic was with the girls on the team. Mm-hmm. And then I came for homecoming. And, you know, if you don't know what HBCU homecoming is, you need to get out to one because it's a different experience. It's like a huge family reunion. So, like, I don't know anyone here. My I don't have no – I have no clue where my friend is. It's homecoming. You don't know. It's just people from all over coming. So, I'm just, like, walking around with my parents and – you know, people are just like offering you food, talking to you, asking mm-hmm. if you're a student, if you're looking here and they're giving, you know, all their experiences, all their experience that they had. They're telling you about that and they're telling you, you know, more stuff about the school, about the athletics, just about everything about, you know, Hampton. Everybody, when you go to HBCU, you love your HBCU and you're very mm-hmm. prideful about your HBCU. And that's how everyone was. And I was like, dang, like, this is nice. Like, I don't even go here and they're treating me like family already. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is crazy. Um, so like just the family atmosphere, it, it's not too far from home. Like if I ever needed to take a train drive, it's not that bad. Um, but it also gives me that distance from home or feeling like I can be, you know, alone and do things on my own. Um, but then also the journalism program. So the former Dean, she had seven Emmys, like going into, you know, TV, that's the people you want around you that can help you and you can learn from them on an everyday basis. So I talked to the dean when I was on my visit and we just talked about things. So she talked about, you know, what I would want to do and how her, you know, her staff, what they do and how they could help and all the things that they have. If you want to do, you know, radio, there's a radio team, there's a news team, there's, we just started a sports team here, sports like newscast team. So there's like tons of things you can do. And no matter what you want to do, there's a professor here that has done it or is doing it and that could help you. And I was like, yeah, like, that's definitely, you know, what I need. Um, so, like, once I figured out, like, you know, the journalism program, I was like, all right, that's that's a that's a, a plus. And then I also like the coach at the time. I like the girls on the team. And I was like, all right, that's also an A plus. And then it all just came down was, could I see myself on this campus? Like, could I see myself being here for four years? Mm-hmm. If the coach leaves or if, you know, staff changes in the journalism program, could I see myself still being here and, it was just all yeses. Um, and my friend even said good things about the school. I enjoyed my visit when I came. So 
it kind of was a no brainer for me. Um, but I always look forward to, you know, whenever people are asking about schools, I always tell them, you know, picture yourself on campus. And if they have, you know, whatever major you want to do, check to see, you know, their major program and, you know, their graduation rate and stuff like that and see, you know, what their alumni have done, you know, since leaving the school. So I always tell them just do your research and making sure you pick the right choice because you do not want to be miserable for four years or it's going to be a long four years. Mm -hmm. Y'all transferred after my freshman year. By the way you talk, you need to be an academic advisor on the side or something. Because <laughs> like, like I said, you did a lot of, did a lot of good research. Yeah. I mean, you start, but you started you started at the Hampton, of course, right? I mean, just shortly after this thing called Name, Image, and Likeness, you know, struck college sport. So can you just talk more generally about, you know, when you start hearing more about, like, this could be a possibility sooner than later, mm -hmm. right? Like, what are thoughts going through your brain? Are you thinking about getting involved? Are you waiting? Just talk more. Talk to us more about like what was that like? Yeah. Um. Well, when I first heard about it, obviously I was a little, I was a little upset about it because I'm like, I had to go through yeah. so much, you know, <laughs> just to make sure that I kept my eligibility. I'm like, I got to go through all these letters. My mom has to talk to all these people. I can't do certain things, and I'm like, that's kind of crazy. Like now it's like, now you can do whatever. Like you got high schoolers out here getting all types of deals. Puma deals, stuff like that. And I'm like, dang, like, that's crazy. But <laughs> Repara any reparations, yo? Honestly, but like, once you like, once I first heard about it, like, I was like, all right, that's cool. But then I was like, there has to be like some type of stuff behind it. Mm. I was like, we don't know everything about it. And it kind of just like, for me, it felt like it just kind of happened. Like, we heard about it a couple of days and then it just happened. I was like, all right, that's a little strange. Like, we don't know too much about this. Like, we don't know anything. Um, so I was a little confused. I kind of took a step back. I wasn't trying to just like, I feel like people were just jumping out at it and just trying to take advantage of it. And I'm like, we don't know, like, you don't know your state rules. You don't know your school rules. Like you need to figure all that out. So I kind of just like sat back and just like wanted to watch and making sure that, you know, if I were to do a deal that it was, you know, the right deal for me, that the company that I was working with, you know, would, you know, follow the, just like the values that I follow. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously you don't want to promote something that you don't, you know, can't stand behind. So I always made sure I did that. But like also just, I don't know. I just felt like there's at the time there wasn't, you know, much going around. I feel like no one really knew what was going on. So like a lot of people were very hesitant about, you know, doing NILs and stuff like that. But then as time started to go on, you know, more people started to become educated about it um, and started, you know, taking those opportunities like you see college football players out here getting deals with like Porsche and Lamborghini and stuff like that so like it it does it does help it does work um I think it's a pretty good idea especially being a college athlete you know how much hard work goes into just the sport you know how hard it is all year and you know balancing school and sport like you know and so you you want some type of uh some type of you know something that pays off and you know just an NIL can easily you know help you with that you know whether you need to get groceries or anything it's just a couple extra dollars in your pocket in case you need it for anything so I do think it's a pretty good I, I like the idea um, and I like what you know I'm seeing some people do you know seeing for example like Shador Sanders like giving back to his team you know giving the whole team beats you know I feel like that's like a, a great way to use the NIL, you see Paige Beckers, you know, giving people on her team different shoes because of her mm -hmm. NIL with StockX. So, you know, there there are good things you can do with it, um, but also just, I don't know, just being just being cautious of, you know, what's going on, make sure, you know, you're not being taken advantage of and make sure, you know, the deal benefits you as well as the brand. That's well said, yo. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, those athletes, Shador and Paige, because I feel like these are my experience working in college sport there were a lot of athletes in, at, you know, at schools that just stayed with their team or just stayed with their institution. But now, mm -hmm. they, like, athletes are more aware of what's happening in other schools, other conferences at D1, D2, and D3 level. Yeah. Oh, it's been pretty dope. Uh, but but also, similar... like, oh, go ahead. also, you have, like, the – you can sign with an agent now, too. So you have that True. to True. also help you and that to also, you know, boost your brand and help your brand. And I feel like some people that I talked to were really talking about building the athlete's brand and not just getting them money. And so we can, you know, this agency can get money. So, you know, really kind of, you know, I feel like it makes athletes like really straighten up their image and making sure that like they post certain things so they can get certain deals. Um, but like just having, you know, an agent probably behind you really helps you because, you know, they know the game, they know how to work around deals and everything. So 
I feel like it, it helps athletes, you know, personal brand and everything, but also just being aware of like just everything going on. This is good. I told you this would be your favorite podcast because you got me off script <laughs> and I'm glad you did because I don't like a script to begin with. So let me ask you this then, right? Because part of this is obviously the brand building, which is more sustainable over time. We get that. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can have an agent or have someone like myself or third party, if you will, helping you to build your brand. But how do you work with outside people when your brand is something that's so individualized and unique to you, right? Like how do you mm-hmm. remain core in your values and building your brand with other people alongside you? I feel like you got to know yourself, right? So if you're working with this brand, um, you got to make sure that that brand, you know, has done their research. They got to want to, you don't want to go, it's like going into a meeting or going to enter, like being interviewed by someone and they're asking questions like, oh, what sport do you play? And you're like, what is this, right? Yep. So yep. like, you got to, you got to really focus on like, do they know who you, who they're working with as well? Like, obviously if they're just reaching out to you and they know nothing about you, you're like, all right, like what's going on? Like something, something's all, you know, fishy going on, but just making sure, you know, things that are aligned and having those meetings before just signing a contract and doing some research and just talking to people, asking questions. You can never ask a dumb question. So just asking Good questions word. and also just, just, you know, making sure it's mutual on both sides. Like if you both want to do something about giving back to kids, you know, that's good. You know, make sure you both have the same interests. Or if, you know, this person sees that you have a million followers and they just want to promote their brand, but you're not really getting anything. Like it's not, it's not going to work out. So just making sure that y'all have similar interests and that you have people behind you, you know, that you trust that are, you know, willing to guide you in the right direction, making sure that you do what's best for you before you can do what's best for other people. Yep. This is going to be a good episode. <laughs> I, I knew it was going to be good to begin with. And so you mentioned being aligned with deals. Um, and so one deal you just did recently, of course, was Mogul and Toyota from at the mm-hmm. HBCU Classic. Uh, why was that a deal you said yes to, number one? And then two, just talk to us more about your experience, you know, traveling to New York, uh, being around, of course, Team Swish, shout out to JR, yeah. and everyone else, everyone else who was up there. Um, well, one, I saw that it was, you know, promoting HBCU. And I was like, yeah. all right, I can get with that. Like, you're, and, you know, Toyota's done, they've done plenty of things to push yeah. HBCU. So, you know, yeah. I, I understand where they're coming from. Um, but also just being able to, I saw it was Howard and Morehouse, so like being able to go see two teams I haven't seen play. Like I, I understand Howard has played Hampton here, but I wasn't able to go to the game. So, you know, just seeing those teams, seeing the atmosphere, seeing the environment, like I want to, I want to go to as many HBCUs as possible because each HBCU is different. So I want to, you know, do my best to support all HBCUs around. So, and I knew that was a no-brainer once I heard, you know, oh, we're it's going to be Howard versus Ham or Howard versus Morehouse, you know. I was like, all right, that'll be cool. And it's up in, you know, it's at MetLife. I was like, that'll be that'll be crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't really know what to expect. Like going into it, I didn't know like that the tailgates were going to be crazy. Like so many people. It's like twelve o'clock, and there's tons of people <laughs> just tailgating, tons of people just talking to you, you know, giving you food just talking they see oh you went to Hampton oh I know this person I went to Hampton oh I went to Hampton like you're just talking to people it's just like like I said about homecoming it's like a family reunion that was just like a mini homecoming with, mm-hmm. with a football game you know in the background like, basically yep. <laughs> yep but you know once I got there you know I didn't really know what to expect I knew we had to you know create some content so I was like all right like let me just you know, see what's going on first and then go to where I think, you know, would do what I would do for the best content. Um, and we did some golfing, got to look at some cars. I'm not a huge car person, but like seeing those cars, I thought were pretty cool. Um, and then also just seeing, you know, fellow HBCU athlete as it, as J.R. Smith, like seeing him taking a picture with him, that was pretty cool. Seeing, you know, his support and then also, I think my favorite part of the entire the, the entire day was probably watching the bands. Like, I love watching the bands because I see how hard that they work throughout the year. Like, they're out there super late practicing or and then they get up super early and they're running and they're still practicing. And I'm like, you practice more than athletes practice. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you and then it all pays off. And it's so fun to watch. And I feel like I feel like everybody was there to watch the band. Like, during the game, the lower bowl. It was filled, but it wasn't like filled. And then once the band came, the entire lower bowl was filled. And I was like, yeah, people came to watch the band and not the actual game. But overall, it was 
it was a fun experience. I got to, you know, meet Malik from Morgan State. I had to talk to him. Um, so that was pretty cool. And just being able to create content, you know, just about HBCUs and highlighting HBCUs. So I thought it was pretty cool. Super dope, yo. Can you talk more about how and how you see NIL progressing, right? Uh, both mm-hmm. throughout your career as a student, uh, but then also as you graduate, given that we can still benefit and monetize some of our name, image, and likeness as well. Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, seeing it progress, I feel like it. I feel like it could go either ways. Um, I feel like you can have those athletes who are, you know, more focused on trying to get NILs, and trying to, you know, you know, go that route and just make money in college instead of like focusing on you know the sport like I don't I'm not saying don't do that but like also realize like you're going to the school to get an education you're going to the school to represent the school and possibly make it to the next level like I feel like don't try to you know just focus on NILs like it'll come if you it it will come but don't like force it to come so like just take your time um so I could feel like it can go that way that, you know, people will focus more on that or it can, you know, really do, you know, change. Like I said, you know, giving back, like being a quarterback, like Shador Sanders, being a quarterback and then giving back to your, you know, O-line or your offense, you know, that makes people want to, that'll make them want to play for you, play harder for you because they see that you're a genuine person and you're not just doing these deals for yourself, that you're you're doing it for them as well. Um, so I feel like you could either go, you know, the Shador Sanders route where, you know, you're giving back to your teammates for those NILs, or you can just like, you know, do it by yourself. You're only worried about that, only worried about if it'll benefit you. Um, and then I feel like it, yeah, it can go either way. Um, I wanted to go in the more positive route just because, you know, like I said, it's extra money in your pocket, you know, college students, you know, you, you can't get a job. You can't make tons of money unless you're you know, I, I don't even know, unless you're just a popular YouTuber gamer or something where you're making that income. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the time, these athletes, you know, you're spending most of your time playing this sport, so you don't have time to go get a job. So easily just taking a picture and posting it on social media or something, like, that could be easy money in your pocket if you need, you know, to go get groceries, like I said, or even just, you know, to go treat yourself to a nice dinner, you know, after a, such a hard week or whatever you need. So, you know, it, it can, I hope it goes that way rather than, you know, just, you know, going backwards. I agree. And one thing you mentioned just now is like NIL, like career development intersection, which is, I think I feel like more people are talking about um, lately, you know, as mm-hmm. a journalist, right? I'm not going to call you an aspiring journalist. You are a journalist now. But how do you see your experience, you know, uh, navigating the NIL space as, as an undergraduate student, helping you, you know, as a practicing journalist when you graduate? Um, hmm. So like how how NL can help me like as in like the journalism field that way. Yep. Yeah. Um. Ooh. Or how it's prepared you to be a a, a better journalist. Put that in quotes, but a, a good journalist. Yeah. Um. Really, just becoming a better researcher. You know, doing research. Now, for interviews, you got to do your research on whoever you're interviewing or just your subject. So, you know, doing your research, and I feel like it goes with NIL, you need to do your research on the brand, and the brand needs to do their research on you. Um, and people say, you know, no bad publicity or bad publicity. There's some, whatever that saying is. Yeah, There's no yeah. such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. I should, yeah. 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 But, you know, I feel like there is. I feel like, you know, you do something with the brand and, you know, how cancel culture is nowadays and how social media is. You mm-hmm. do something with the brand that, you know, affects a certain group, they're not going to no one's going to like you and that'll affect your mental health. That'll mm-hmm. affect how you play. That'll affect how your grades are. So now you're behind and everything. And it's like a snowball effect. So it'll just keep happening. Everything will just keep piling on. So like really just doing your research, I feel like that'll help, you know, that kind of coincides with, you know, the journalism aspect. Um, and also, you know, just making sure, you know, as a journalist, whoever you're interviewing, you want them to look good. Yep. It's not just about your work. Like you're writing about this person. So you need to make them look good. And when you make them look good, people start to realize how good your work is. So, you know, kind of balances, you know, I'll balance it, but like goes right with, you know, NIL, you know, as an athlete, you want to make the brand look good, but you also want to make yourself look good. And when exactly. you make the brand look good, that'll fall back on you because you're the one creating this content for these brands. So it, it kind of goes together. I never really thought about it, but it definitely goes together. And, you know, you can see the similarities. I love that a lot. I love that. 
Segment three, getting into action items, yo. Again, I'm a student too. We know how class goes. Yeah. Uh, so for those who have made it at this point in the conversation, really want to summarize, you know, three takeaways that you want um, our mm -hmm. audience members to, to leave with after our conversation together. Um, making sure you stand behind your values and not change because of a certain amount of money. I feel like that's a huge one. Um, doing research, whether you're looking to go into a certain college, um, looking to do a brand deal, just looking for anything, you know, do your research and making sure, you know, things are looking good for, you know, not just one party, but for both parties as well. Mm. Hmm. And the last one, Honestly, I feel like it, I haven't, I feel like I might have touched it a little bit, but not really, but making sure you're happy, you know, mm -hmm. focusing on your happiness, make sure you do stuff for you and not for other people. I feel like that's a big one that I feel like a lot of people talk about it, but at the same time, we don't talk about it enough. Like you got to make sure you're happy to perform well to make sure, you know, that'll affect other people. So when you're happy, you're doing well. Everyone around you is doing well because you're happy. So making sure you are happy because that's what's most important and you know don't even worry about if other people are happy if they're you know with you if they've been with you for a long time no matter what you do they're gonna if they see you happy they're gonna be happy as well so making sure you focus on yourself before you can focus on others yo you on it yo yeah i, I like you 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 good appreciate that you're real good so before we bounce <laughs> i got a, i got a few questions for you it's like round robin type questions all fun questions nothing nothing serious uh, so the first thing that comes to mind, if you need a second, of course, take the second. But first question, what's your favorite snack? Ooh. So I got a I got a snack drawer, right, at my desk. This is like my <laughs> gaming desk, right? So I keep yeah, I keep the game right here, TV set up, got a snack drawer, and I get I have the Welch's fruit snacks. Oh, it was, it was slap. Pirates booty and um the the chocolate chip mini bites, little bites. The red no bag. Yes, I don't even. Yeah. It's, I don't even know, but just the little bite. That's what I call them. So I keep that. I keep that with me. Those are like the snacks that I'm on right now. But if I'm, you know, going to a store, I'll get some some Funyuns or some hot Funyuns. Some Funyuns. I ain't heard of Funyuns in a minute, yo. Yeah, I love Funyuns. I mean, they have your breast thinking, but like they're still so good. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the yellow bag, right? Yeah. I ain't seen these Funyuns in a minute. Hold on, don't get me off topic. Favorite journalist. Ooh. To, to watch and follow. To watch and follow your favorite journalists. I wouldn't say I have a a singular favorite journalist. I like you know like Marie Taylor, Carrie Champion, Jamel Hill, mm -hmm. Taylor Rooks. She's she's pretty good too. Um, I also Julie Foudy. Um, mm -hmm. I got to watch her. You know, I think I was like freshman in college. When I or freshman in high school when I first started getting into um, you know what I wanted to do and I saw her interviewing people I got interviewed by her and I felt you know how comfortable I was mm -hmm. you know that's how I want people to be whenever I interview them so you know and then Carrie Champion and Jamel Hill also those two as well I met them in 2014 and yep. you know seeing how they opened their arms to my mom and I at this event that we knew nobody at um, seeing how open they were for us and know making sure that we were all good and you know asking us if we wanted to go anywhere with them so you know just those three are probably you know my top three but also you know Latina Robinson I've talked to her yeah. a few times That's good too. Marie Maria Taylor came to our class and we talked a few times so like stuff like that wow. but also what Taylor Rooks is doing you know with her podcast like I think that's pretty cool you can see how comfortable you know I watched a lot of NBA players that she was interviewing so seeing how comfortable all those NBA players were with her like I think that's pretty cool but also, you can tell how good of a person she is because she's not just hanging out with them just to do the interviews. Like, she's actually friends with them, and they actually mm -hmm. want to do her podcast and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are probably in my top six, I think it was. It counts. Look, it's a construct, yo. So you can't say Taylor Rooks podcast, but your favorite podcast. It's only one answer. Yeah, it's been this one so far. Yeah. I think this is, like, the only podcast yeah. I've done this year, honestly. We love that. We love that. Yeah. Your favorite Netflix show? Stranger Things good call i need to catch up with that one all right let me ask you this this is an important question which takes longer for you to make the instagram caption or the instagram reel i don't post reels really but i'd probably say the caption 
Why? I don't know. I feel like, obviously, if you're going to choose a picture, you're going to choose a fire picture, right? Like, you want the picture to be fire. But, like, it's all about the caption. True. Like, if you got, like, a fire picture with a fire caption, it makes the post 10 times better. Now, if you just got the fire picture without the caption, people are like, all right, what is, like, what am I looking at? And it gives you, the caption will give the picture more context. True. True. So, I definitely say the caption. You're a one-liner, you're a one-liner caption, or you like like a paragraph or two? Nah, I like I like to keep it short. Not too many people like to read too much about Instagram. I mean, unless it's like something deep, but like yeah. I usually just keep it short, couple emojis, and I'm good. <laughs> call it a day. Yeah. Uh FaceTime or phone call. It depends who it is. Yeah. If I'm playing the game, I definitely prefer phone call because I'm focused, I'm locked in on the game. <laughs> so my eyes won't be on the camera. But like, if it's like me trying to tell a friend some type of news or something, then definitely FaceTime. FaceTime for the T. What, what game yeah. you on, yo? You keep mentioning this I'd be game. On, I'd be on Call of Duty. So I can't play that. I can't yeah. move and shoot at the same time. Like, yeah, I'd be my on hands Call don't work Duty. like that. Yeah, it's, it's bad because I like... I bought my game last year. I bought the new PS5 last year, like, uh, like last fall or no, last February. Sorry. I bought that and I was like, all right, like, let's see what it's about. <laughs> and I found the Ethernet port in the room and I had the whole setup and I was like, yeah, like, um, I'm, I'm going to be on this all the time. There's no lags or anything. But yeah, I just be playing Call of Duty and all my my friends be talking trash, calling me trash and everything. I'm not the best player. But I mean, I'm a great team player. I'm a great role player. I know my role. I'm not gonna get ten kills a game. I'll give you five, maybe two or three. But like <laughs> those kills are come at crucial times. So, uh, all right. When I get my PS5 after my uh, program, I'll add you. We could play. Yeah, we. Yeah. We, we could definitely play Spotify, Apple Music. Neither. Title. I use. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. You're, you're, a, you're a music <laughs> listener for real. People don't know the title. Uh, mm -hmm. Go to artist or go to song or album right now. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. Lately, I've been I've been on to Usher, like mm. old Usher. Mm. That's what I've been feeling lately. But just like the go to people for me, you know, I like Drake. I like Jay Z. I could throw some Justin Bieber in there, some Ariana Grande in there. Um. Olivia Rodrigo, her album was pretty good. So I, I really just listen to whatever. All right, Monet, this is an important question for our friendship. What's Drake's, what's your favorite Drake album? Ooh. That's a great question. Hmm. Ooh. Honestly, Take Care. I, yeah, I'm gonna go with Take Care. I could mess with Take Care. All right, you cool, so I keep you around. His best What's, album is Views, Views, man. See, I like Views, too, but, like, thinking about, like, when Drake, if it wasn't for Take Care, we wouldn't get Views. True, but, but you know like, Take I mean? Care is, like, college dropout with Kanye. Like, you can't, you can't, com you can't compete with that album, like. Yeah, but I do, see, I, like, Take, I would say my top three are Take Care, Views, and Scorpio. Scorpio, or Scorpion, yeah. whatever that's yeah. called, yeah. yeah. Those are, like, my top ones. But I did see Views in concert, I think twice and that was probably my favorite concert between that and Beyonce are like my favorite two concerts Fair. yeah I'll, I'll tell you this it's not a Drake podcast what it is now but certified <laughs> certified lover boy is going to age to be Drake's best album honestly I I, I like that I like that it's I know a hot at take, the time, like... I wouldn't say it's a hot take I feel like at the time when it first came out people weren't expecting it True. Like, as you start to really listen to it, you start to you appreciate good music. You know what I mean? I feel you. It, you like, it takes you like time. You got title, yeah, I got title I too. I got title, too. Yeah. It comes with my phone plan. So I was like, I was using it. And then I heard it was like Jay-Z at first mm -hmm. or whatever. So I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely got to. All right. Last uh, three questions for you. Your favorite Hampton memory. My favorite Hampton memory. One you can tell on this podcast, yo. Don't get me in trouble. No, 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 I don't do anything crazy. Um, honestly, freshman year was fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was cut short, but like, I feel like all freshman, all of freshman year for 
however many months that I was on campus. I really enjoy that. And till this day, we talk about all the memories from freshman year. So definitely freshman year. I love that answer. You mentioned the band earlier. If you were in a marching band at Hampton, what instrument are you playing? I feel like I'd be a drums person. Mm. Snare or bass? Or probably snare, a snare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. That would be lit. The last question for you. Who else do you want to see and or hear from on the Mogul Podcast? And you mentioned a couple of names. So if you don't mention this person's name, I'm, I'm going to add it to it. But who you want to see and hear from? Nah, uh, well, I know I saw a picture on your Instagram of uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. Yeah, That's we went God. to the we went to the same school for a couple of years. That's you know, we, we played basketball together for a few a few times. Yeah. Um, so I probably say Marv. Also, I do want I want to see I want to hear from Shador for sure. I feel like he I I feel like that whole family is just super interesting, and I would just love to hear. I see their TikToks all the time, and the conversation that they have, I feel like it's pretty cool. So I would love to hear from him. All right, check this out. So Marv said he had to do a part two for us, so we can get you and Marv at the same time. That'll be dope. And I'll come to Philly for that. Number okay. One. That's easy. Talk to Shador. Talk to Mr. Sanders, yo. You need to get him on. I mean, I don't I could try, but. You got pool, man. Come on, I could. Tr- I could try. I could try. But, yeah, I think that would be cool. Just listen to him, you know. Especially, you know, having your dad be your coach from yeah. however long. And then coming, just, you know, figuring out, you know, their decision of going to Jackson State. Like, he probably could have gone anywhere. And he mm-hmm. probably could be making tons of money NIL wise from different schools, but just the you know the attention that they have brought to Jackson State and to HBCUs, even though you know the attention was there, but like the next the level that they took it to is is crazy. And just seeing how packed their stadium gets, like I want to, I definitely want to watch them play. Um, so I'll look at their schedule. Maybe I know they have like a rival with uh, Southern, so maybe go to that game. Yeah, that's lit. That's like well said, Joe. Before we bounce, anything else you want to share with the people today? Nah, that's it. All right, favorite podcast. Yes, I told you we have fun. The here. Mogul podcast. Yeah, we have fun. We have fun here, yo. Yeah. Well, hey, I will say for- though, the, I I do have some. I will say the Mogul website. I think it's the idea is pretty cool. You know, you sign up yeah. as an athlete, and then you can go through the jobs and like apply to them. I think that's I think that's cool. Like you don't see that, and it's not just like small brands like. You know, Toyota's up there. There's so many different other brands up there, you know, and you can read the description about what they want from you. You can ask questions. So I think the whole mogul, you know, idea is pretty good, especially for, you know, players at like smaller colleges that not many people are looking at. I think, you know, just, you know, being able to go on a website and apply to jobs that, you know, you you think you can, you know, fit well with. I think that's pretty cool. That's love, yo. That's love. We, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yeah, of course. I, I, don't, I don't have no, uh, what do you call them, mini cookies? What do you call them things? The mini little, bites? Oh, little bites, yeah. Little bites, yeah. I don't got no little <laughs> bites, but but next, again, when I get this PS5, we on, we on card, yo. But again, I will I'm say saying, another snack that I do enjoy now to say <laughs> that is Granny Smith unsweetened applesauce. People think I'm weird, but it's so good. No. Nah. You, you got to try it one time. It doesn't what, what taste it, like. What, what it tastes like? It just tastes like. It literally, it's just applesauce. It tastes like a green apple, like green apple. Like I feel like the regular Mott's applesauce, it'll taste like the red apple, but the there. green, the Granny Smith one tastes like the green apple, and it doesn't like, taste like it doesn't have any sugar in it. You like green grapes too, don't you? No, nah, I like red grapes, and oh, I like red that. apples. Oh, that's, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, yo. When they, thank you for yeah. your time today. Definitely enjoy learning more about you, uh, hearing your NIL experience, but then also how we can best support you as you continue to pursue you, you know your career as a journalist yo thank you thank you i appreciate it for everyone else yo thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the mogul podcast uh, i know y'all enjoyed this episode so be, uh, be sure to rate us five stars and leave a, um, a dope review um, should you have time today i look forward to joining y'all next week as we interview another guest to talk more about how we can help all athletes get paid build their brand and make a difference peace out